<laughs> What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Now I was, I was gonna wait to stick this in until the tank and everything else came off to get resprayed when I go on my holidays. Yeah, I'm not waiting for that. I got caught out again. <laughs> I set the trip thinking, oh, I don't know, I'll just give it so many miles and whatnot. And when I get to that point, I'll just fill up again. Jubbies have picked a number that was too high. So, um, I want to get a working fuel sender. I've got some other bits and pieces turned up. Um, where are they? So there you go, I've got some dash lights, because obviously the left turn signal is a bit clunky. So I've got some spares, and it's, it's two different sorts of bulbs. Because you've got the, um, the lights down the right hand side for like fuel sender and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got the ones across the bottom for neutral and blah de blah de blah. So I've got some of them. I've also got um, my seal kits, so seals and bushings uh, for the front forks. So we're all good to go there. Also got some seven and a half weight oil, um, a litre of that, which should be good enough to do it. Um, as stock it's 10, but I'm going seven and a half um, and you'll see the differences there. So I'm just waiting on the springs and then I can rebuild the forks and get the suspension properly sorted on the front end. Simon's still going to be doing the, the rear shock for me, but that is going to have to wait because this is my daily and I can't have it off the road. Um, so that is going to have to wait until I go on my holidays. But, you know, the back's not too bad. It's the front end that's the problem. Um, so basically I need to have all the plastics off, upend the tank and drain it. I'm not sure into what, but I'll drain it. And then we can get this swapped out and see if this is going to fix it. So that's what I'm doing. Just here, everybody go. What are you taking all that lot off for? I thought you just wanted to get to the tank. Well, I do. Trouble is, that hole there is covered up by the seat fairing bit, you know, the seat unit. You can't get to it. <laughs> you can't get to it at all. Um, so, to, to yeah, you know, I've undone all the rest of it. So, plastics off the front, undone all the front of the tank. To get to this bit, I have to take the seat, seat unit off, which means splitting everything again anyway, which is a proper pain just to get up one flaming bolt on each side. There we go. Right, let's get the other side off. Right, easy way to drain the tank is you've obviously got to disconnect the fuel feed for the carbs anyway, which is this top one. This one is the feed off the bottom of the tank. So literally all I've done is stuck a bit of hose on it, turned the tap on and it's going straight in my jerry can. Easy. Um, the pickup point is right down here, so you can pretty much get everything out of the tank. Um, according to the book of words, what did it say again? Uh, where are we? Fuel tank capacity, C models, overall 21 litres. 21 litres. I pretty much filled it up yesterday, so this could take a while. Um, this thing apparently trips when it gets to six and a half litres. <clears throat> so, you know, about there. <laughs> so I've got to get everything out of it just to make sure that this thing is working. Are you still going there? Yeah, still going. Um, look at me trying to get organised. I've got one of them organiser jobbies. 25 quid for a bit of plastic. But I'm fed up searching through biscuit tins and sweet tins and 
plastic bags and also looking for an M6 by 20. <laughs> so I am trying to get organized. I'm probably gonna get some more of them. I also got, I wanna get away from open storage as well. Because when you're grinding and everything else, these things, they just get absolutely full of grinding dust. Um, so I need to try and come up with a bit of a solution for that. All the stuff up the top, I'm not bothered about. But that lot needs to go, I think. It was a good idea to start off with, but it's just tedious now. Come on. Right, he's going to take a while. Right, brew. up on the Haynes Book of Fairy Tales. Yeah, it looks proper dangerous now, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So this is the fuel level warning jobby. bottom of everything <laughs> to get to anything everything has got to come off right. so there we go there's the old one all right let's give that a quick clean um, cloth And it really is just a case of old one out, new one in, and then check it. Where's my goo? Right, there's my goo. Um, is this little jobby gonna fit? No. <laughs> I thought it would. So I didn't really want to, but I'm going to have to reuse this one. Because I ain't got one. Come on. So I'm wondering, if, couldn't I just shove an O-ring in it? I know they're kind of oblong, but that is the right size. Right, right this O-ring is a little bit chunkier uh, than the one that I'm taking out. But it does fit in the groove, it just stands a little bit proud, but then it's all going to get squashed down anyway once you tighten it all up. So I'm just going with it. If it leaks, then obviously I'll just go with the old one. Ideally, I would have had another new one, but I ain't got one. So I just want to see if this is going to do the do. Which I think you will. I think. Alright, so we can go in there. So he's in. Um, I did meter this one. So there's only two wires that come out of it. Um, I had a meter across there and then I dunked it in a thing of fuel 
and it didn't change. The, the reading that I was getting didn't change at all. Did the same thing with this, um, and it did change, which is actually quite quite hopeful, really. So I'm pretty sure this one's knackered. That's not how the Book of Words tells you how to do it, though. The Haynes Book of Fairy Tales says that you've got to drain all the tank, um, and then, um, basically, it's really weird, actually, because when you turn the ignition on, the lights just flash. You know, the low-level warning light just flashes, and it doesn't matter how much fuel there is in it, which is a bit stupid, really. But then once you fired it up, then the lights will go out. So the way it tells you to do it is to have all this out the tank, connect it back up to the bike, fire the bike up, and it should be flashing because it's not in anything, and then you dunk it in a pot of fuel and it should extinguish and when you take it out again about three or four minutes later it should go out again. It's a stupid way of checking it. <laughs> Absolutely stupid. So all I'm going to do is shove this back on the bike. I know there's no fuel in there at the minute so the light should just keep flashing even when I'm running the engine um, and there's enough fuel in the float bowls just to you know keep things ticking over and then I'm just going to leave it running and fill the tank up um, and hopefully we get to six and a half litres in here and the lights will stop flashing. But I really don't like the idea of having the bike running, running out of fuel, me there with that in one hand and a pot of fuel in the other hand trying to test it. It's a stupid way of doing it. Right, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. Right, nothing to bolt, well I've got bolts in the back, but that's it. <laughs> I've also just chucked uh, four litres of fuel in there. So we should still be below the level that this sensor is gonna trip off. Um, that little connector, because it's, it's kind of one to the other, it's not strain relieved, there's no little clip on it. So I shoved it together, riddled the tank about, and the bloody thing fell off. The truth is you can't get in there and put like a cable clip around it or anything else. Which is a bit rubbish, really. Um, so the idea is we're just going to fire the bike up. You'll see there's some lights up here that will start flashing, the two at the top. And they should keep flashing, which at the minute they don't. They just go... Basically, I would fire the bike up. Well, turn the ignition on, they'd flash, fire the bike up, and they would go out. They should be flashing. Um, and as long as they're flashing, then that's all good. And we'll just shove another four or well, three and a half litres of fuel in it. And when all that lot goes in, it should stop flashing. That's the idea anyway. Right, mind your ears. See, they're flashing now. I don't know, can you see that? Um, sort of. There you go, so you can see them flashing. Right, right let's give it um, large. have gone out. So hopefully you saw, because I'm not doing it again, I'm not draining it all out. <laughs> but you turn it on 
and they're flashing i suppose that's just like a check so you know you know the bulbs are working you're not going to get caught out the fact that there's two of them is like a bit overkill in my humble opinion but there you go so you turn the ignition on they start flashing and once you get the engine going then they go out and then it has a little think about it and goes no definitely low on fuel and starts flashing the lights again but bring it up to six and a half litres and they do actually go out which is quite cool so if i turn it back on again they should start flashing there you go I'm calling that fixed. Right, let's put the rest of the fuel back in and put the bugger back together. That's it, all back together again. And the time is, I've got finished with three minutes to spare. It's very nearly half past 12. <laughs> but anyway, it's another little job that's ticked off because I, I mean, like I said, I'd be caught out twice and there is nothing more annoying than you hear this, like, da, 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 you know exactly what the trouble is. <laughs> Especially when you've just gone past a petrol station. So anyway, that's all done and dusted, so I'm happy with that. The next job is going to be the forks. I've just checked. The, the springs are on their way. They're coming from Germany. Only ones I could find. But they're on their way from Germany, so they should be here in time for next weekend. So I'm hoping next weekend to have all the forks out, get all that lot redone, and at least, you know, rebuild the front end. Um, the rear end's going to have to wait until July. Um, but if I can... St it's, it's too bouncy at the front, basically. You go into a corner, and you can feel it kind of like this, it's not good. It needs a bit more damping. I think the geometry and everything else is fine. It tips in, lovely. Um, but it's like the, the mid corner and the way out, it's just all a bit vague and wobbly, basically. But anyway, there you go. That's where I'm gonna leave it for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, yes.